For folks just getting into the world of PC customization, there's probably nothing more exciting than RGB lighting. But a close second has got to be overclocking your processor. Just go to any large computer enthusiast forum and you'll encounter tons of people passionately discussing their overclocking results, their cooling systems, and which CPUs are the most forgiving for tinkerers. But as active and vibrant as the overclocking community is, have you ever wondered whether it's even worth it to go through the hassle of making adjustments to your CPU to squeeze every last megahertz you can out of your hardware before it reaches the point of instability? Well, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Although seasoned veterans of the overclocking game know this well, novices who get excited after buying their first unlocked CPU may not know that while you certainly can get a performance bump by overclocking, you're not likely to change your computing experience in a jaw-dropping way. But why would that be? Well, as we discussed in this episode, the improvements that we've seen with CPUs over the past couple of decades have largely been due to changing their architectures, that is, the way that the pathways that handle logic inside the processor are put together, as well as shrinking transistor sizes that make the processors faster and more power efficient. Like, don't get me wrong, higher clock speeds are still better, but this is only true when you're comparing like to like that is to say, two processors with the same microarchitecture and the same number of cores. And to top it off, you're almost certainly not going to be able to get close to, say, doubling the factory clock speed at home unless you're running some sort of incredibly exotic, high-dollar cooling setup. And the thing to bear in mind, guys, is that even then, that kind of equipment is usually meant for short-term overclocks in a competition environment not for everyday use. With a standard air or water cooler, you're likely to get a few hundred megahertz bump, but anything north of one gigahertz is probably going to be a bit of a challenge. So does that mean overclocking is a huge waste of time and does nothing practical? Well, no, we're not saying that at all. We're just saying to have realistic expectations, which includes knowing how different types of programs and games utilize your CPU and your GPU in different ways. You see, while some applications are heavily tied to CPU performance, including programs that do lots of encoding, such as video editing and uh, file compression utilities, others don't really care that much how fast your CPU is, and this includes many games, which are often much more tied to how quickly your GPU can spit out frames. So if you were to overclock your CPU by a few hundred megahertz, you could expect your files to compress or your videos to export a little bit faster. But you might actually see virtually no improvement when you're gaming. That is, unless you're playing a title where there's a great deal of CPU-bound logic, such as some larger scale simulation games. However, graphics card overclocking might end up being quite useful, with some titles getting a bump of 5 or even 10 frames per second or more, which could noticeably smooth out your experience, especially if you're getting an extra 5 or 10 frames during a dip while the action's intense. There is something to be said, though, for the ease with which you can overclock a modern chip. Back in the day, overclocking was far more tedious, as we explained in this video. But these days, with easy-to-use firmware and overclocking software, combined with power-efficient chips that don't need a super expensive motherboard to overclock, dialing in your settings can take mere seconds, and then validating those seconds is often a matter of doing an automated stress test for a few hours up to a couple of days. Plus, many folks love overclocking as a fun hobby and a way to get free performance out of their rigs, even if it's not going to turn their home battle station into the Cray supercomputer. And while overclocking typically voids a standard CPU warranty, modern processors are so reliable that this isn't much of a concern for most tinkerers. So as far as we're concerned, give it a shot. The results might not be earth shattering, but it's one of the few times in life that you can go faster for free. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to uh, traffic court. Just kidding. Do you want to get the most out of your overclocking experience? Check out the Intel Performance Maximizer, a free way to confidently bring added performance to your unlocked system. This intelligent tool analyzes your processor's individual performance characteristics and makes custom overclocking automatic and simple.
Then, for additional peace of mind, consider Intel's Performance Tuning Protection Plan. For a nominal price, your 9th gen Intel Core processor is covered in case it fails due to overclocking. So check out the Intel links below and make your overclocking experience both easier and less stressful. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other videos, leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future video, and don't forget to subscribe. Forgetting to subscribe to TechWiki is the leading cause of dead birds.